Congratulations on your purchase of the Millermatic 250 all-in-one welding package. Regardless of your application, you can depend on the Millermatic 250 to provide quality welds time after time, year after year. For maximum performance, the machine must be properly set up for each particular application. That's the subject in the first part of this presentation. Following that, we'll be demonstrating how to set and fine-tune voltage and wire feed speed. Practically everything you'll need to begin welding is included with the machine. The welding gun, a sample spool of 035 wire, contact tubes for 030 and 035 wire, the wire inlet guide, anti-wear guide, and four drive rolls. One set for 030 and one set for 035 wire. The 10-foot work cable and clamp, gas cylinder chain, argon CO2 regulator flow gauge with a 5-foot gas hose, and the owner's manual. Section 3 in the owner's manual outlines the steps involved in installing the machine. Completely read this section before setting up the equipment. Also included in the owner's manual is a section on arc welding safety. It's important that you read and follow all precautions in this section. The first step is to select a location for the machine. The cooling fan automatically turns on when needed to draw air through the louvers on the front panel. So you should allow at least 18 inches of open space for good airflow. To assemble the work clamp, slide the boot over the cable, then route the cable out the front panel opening from the inside. Connect the cable to the negative output terminal and cover the connection with the boot. Route the cable through the clamp handle and use the bolt, washer and nut to secure the cable to the clamp. The machine is shipped from the factory set for electrode positive for solid steel and aluminum wires. Some flux cord wires operate with the electrode connected to the negative terminal. In this case, the leads are reversed. Refer to the polarity changeover label inside the machine and always follow the wire manufacturer's recommendation regarding polarity. Use pliers to crimp the S-hook to the small hole on the bracket. Then attach the snap to the chain. Always use the chain to secure the cylinder to the machine. Install the gas supply by removing the cylinder cap and briefly opening the valve while standing to the side. This will blow any dust and dirt from the fitting. Install the regulator flow gauge so the face is vertical and tighten the fitting. Install the gas hose between the regulator flow gauge and the machine. These connections have right-hand fittings. Make sure they're tight to avoid gas leaks. A typical flow rate is 20 cubic feet per hour. It's a good idea to check the wire manufacturer's recommendation. The gauge can be adjusted between 5 and 25 CFH. When you're using carbon dioxide shielding gas, a CO2 adapter is installed between the regulator flow gauge and the gas cylinder. Next, we'll install the drive rolls and wire inlet guide. We're setting the machine up for 035 wire, so we select the appropriate drive rolls and use the screws to attach them. Slide the wire inlet guide in until it almost touches the drive roll. Then tighten the securing screw. Slide the anti-wear guide into the inlet guide and tighten the set screw. The gun is connected to the drive roll housing by loosening the securing knob and sliding the connection in until it bottoms out. Then tightening the securing knob. The gun trigger is plugged into the receptacle on the front panel. Section 3-8 in the owner's manual has information on connecting input power. 
It's very important that the jumper links in the machine be properly positioned for the machine to operate correctly. The machine is supplied with the jumper link set for the highest voltage. For example, this particular machine is for operation on 200, 230, or 460 volts. So the links are set for 460 volts at the factory. To change the link arrangement, in our case to 230 volts, remove the screw and pivot the door up. Refer to the decal for proper link placement. Be careful not to drop the links into the machine when doing this. Close the door and replace the screw. Table 3-2 in the manual recommends fuse or circuit breaker rating in amps for various input voltages. For example, when connected to 230 volts, the machine will draw 43 amps at rated load and should be fused for 70 amps. Now we're ready to install the wire spool and adjust the hub tension. Remove the retaining ring and compression spring. Slide the spool onto the hub so wire feeds off the bottom. Rotate the spool until the hub pin fits into the hole on the back of the spool. Then, reinstall the compression spring and retaining ring. To adjust hub tension, turn the spool while using a wrench to adjust the hub tension nut. Tension is set correctly when a slight force is needed to turn the spool. To thread wire through to the welding gun, we first open the pressure assembly. Hold the wire securely to keep it from unspooling and cut off the bent end. While holding the wire, push it through the guides and into the gun. Then close and tighten the pressure assembly. Remove the nozzle from the gun. Turn the power switch on. Turn up wire speed and press the gun trigger until the wire comes out the end of the gun. Contact tubes come in various sizes for different diameter wires and it's important that the correct size be used. We're setting up for 035 wire so we're using an 035 contact tube. Install the contact tube and nozzle. At this time, check the drive roll pressure by feeding wire against a piece of wood. The wire should feed smoothly and steadily without slipping. Adjust tension if necessary. Cut off the wire at the end of the contact tube. The machine is now set up and ready to begin welding. The two controls on the front panel that adjust the welding parameters are wire speed and voltage. The scale around the wire speed control is a percentage, not an actual value. The control is set based on suggested values from the decal inside the door. More on that in a moment. The switch below the wire speed control selects either low range or full range. Anytime you have a choice, it's better to use the low range because changes are made in smaller increments. The scale around the voltage control indicates actual voltage. Both controls are set based on the chart inside the machine. For example, we're using 035 ER70S-6 mild steel wire and a gas mixture of 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. Referring to the chart, we see that if we're welding on material a quarter of an inch thick with 035 wire and 7525 shielding gas, we'd set the voltage for 20.5 and the wire speed at 85% on the low range or 44% on the full range. These are starting points and will probably have to be fine-tuned. We turn the voltage control to 20.5. Remember, these are actual voltage values. 
The chart indicated that wire speed could be set at 85% low range or 44% full range. Remember, anytime you have a choice, use the low range. So we move the switch to the low range and set the wire speed at 85%. Now that a starting point for voltage and wire speed have been set, we can make some practice welds and fine tune the arc. Turn on shielding gas and set the flow rate for 20 cubic feet per hour. Turn the machine on. And wearing all personal protective equipment, make a practice well. Remember that the settings we made were a starting point, and because of the many variables involved, might need to be adjusted. Listen to the sound of the arc. It should be smooth and steady. Examine the finished weld. The shape of the bead is largely controlled by the setting of the voltage control. If the bead is narrow and ropey, Increase the voltage slightly, then readjust wire speed until the arc sound is again smooth and steady. If the bead is excessively wide with an increase in weld spatter, try lowering the voltage, then readjusting wire speed to get a good arc sound. At the top is an example of a good weld bead. Voltage and wire speed were set correctly. The weld in the middle was made with voltage and wire speed set too low. The bottom bead is the result of a voltage and wire speed set too high. Refer to section 6 in the owner's manual for a complete listing of maintenance procedures. The groove and the drive roll must be aligned with the inlet guide to properly feed wire. Rotate the drive roll alignment bolt in or out until the groove aligns with the wire guide. Circuit breaker CB1, located behind the access door, protects the drive motor from overload. If CB1 opens, wire will not feed. In this case, check the welding gun liner for blockage or kinks. Also check the wire drive assembly for jammed wire, a binding drive gear, or misaligned drive rolls. After a cooling period, reset the circuit breaker. When the machine is changed to run either the smaller 023 wire or larger 045 wire, you'll need to purchase a conversion kit. Included in the kit is a monocoil liner, wire guide, drive rolls, and contact tubes. To change the gun liner, first turn off and disconnect primary power. Cut the welding wire at the contact tube. And retract the wire into the spool and secure. Remove the gun trigger connection. Loosen the gun securing knob and remove the gun. At the gun, remove the nozzle, contact tube, and contact tube adapter. At the feeder end of the cable, remove the wire outlet guide and pull the liner from the casing. Blow the gun casing out with compressed air. Insert the new liner into the casing. Reinstall the wire outlet guide so that an eighth inch of liner sticks out. Cut the liner off at the head tube so that a half inch sticks out of the head tube. Then replace the gun's contact tube adapter. The contact tube. And the nozzle.
and reattach it to the machine. Optional receptacle modules can be installed on the front panel to allow the Millermatic 250 to be used with the Spoolmatic 30A 200 amp 100% duty cycle air cooled one pound spool gun with 30 foot cable assembly. This makes an ideal package for feeding aluminum wires because of the short distance the wire must travel. Receptacle modules are also available for use with Spoolmatic 3 and XR feeders. Your Miller distributor will have information and catalog sheets on these products. Remember, your local Miller distributor is available to provide any technical assistance you might need, in addition to spare parts, wires, and gases.